And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Seven Bridges, which is uh, takes place in a historic Konigsberg, and it's called a Stroll and Write. It's a Roll and Write, but they call it Stroll and Write, and I don't dislike that name. This was definitely a Kickstarter, and in this one you're drawing on a map, a walking path, or a driving path, or a cycling path, through Konigsberg, trying to visit historical landmarks and score points. That's how you win. Here's how you play. Each player is going to have a sheet of the city of Konigsberg and you're going to all color in the same square. So let's say, for example, you all want to start at this square. You'll just color in the streets there that are shown on that square. So everyone's going to start at the same spot. Then you're going to start a certain number of rounds, and the rounds will change based on the number of players. And you're going to roll these dice, and these dice are going to show various combinations of streets. And starting with one player, you're going to draft one of the dice and immediately draw it on your map. So maybe I would draft this curve here, and then you're going to connect it to the roads that you already have and keep going. Now as you connect, there's going to be straights. There's also these horses which allow you to draw two or three in a straight line. There's half roads, and there's some roads about how you connect things. But there's also a couple landmarks. You'll notice there's A, B, C different letters around the board and I just went next to the B here so I get one of these bonuses. Now a bonus could be an immediate use here so I could take this bonus for example and on my turn I can always after I take my die or before I take my die use the bonus by coloring in the arrow there and drawing an extra line on my board. These bonuses down here allow me to re-roll the remaining dice if I want to. And the final bonus down here lets me go on footpaths. And there are various footpaths around the board. You can't draw on those until you've used that special ability. Also, if for some reason you can't do something, let's say I have a cross like this and there's no crosses next to my road network, you're allowed to downgrade the die to a lower die to take that. At the end of the game, you're going to be checking scoring on seven different ways here. However, you're only going to score for each bridge that you've crossed. So here in this example, I've crossed one, two, three, four, five bridges. So I'll pick my five of the seven ways to score, and I'll score those. So I can't score all seven ways. I'd have to cross all seven bridges. Each way, the first one, street footpath, you're looking for like a closed loop, your biggest closed loop, and you'll get points for essentially corners of how many times it bends around that closed loop. Bridges, you're going to get points. And for landmarks, if you're next to landmarks, and both of those have a scale here at the bottom. So for example, if I visit one landmark, I get one point. If I visit all of them, I get 45. If I cross all my bridges, I get 50 points. Buildings, simply one point for each building you go next to, and you would just color those in. You know, as long as you touch one side of it, you would get that, and you get one point for each. Trees, one point for each tree that's next to it. So if you see I went down this line here, there's a lot of trees over here. If you go off the edge of the board, so there's certain spots that go off, you would get the numbers of the grid coordinates as you go off the bottom of the board here, and there's different ways to go off, so I could score those victory points. And then drafting for the bonuses on the side here, how many of those did you get? And so again, there's seven, di seven different ways to score here, but you'll just take your highest ones, unless of course you got all seven bridges, in which case you would score all of them. Whoever has the highest score is the winner. There's a lot of sheets in this game, double-sided here. Of course, I always, when I keep one of these, I laminate it. Uh, now, I've been showing you with the black pencil. For some reason, they give you a bunch of colored pencils, and that's pretty, but some of them just don't work very well. Yellow colored pencils should not be used, but they did give you this like little container to hold all the pencils in, so that's kind of cute. I mean, it's not necessary, but hey, you have it. You also, it also comes with an eraser and a little meeple to show who starts. The dice are okay quality. They're wooden dice, so they have a nice look to them, but they don't roll very satisfyingly, in my opinion. The board is a little difficult to see. 
I, I found it, especially um, they, they in the rule book. And the rule book's really nice because it talks about a lot of historical stuff. And by the way, it has some solo play rules in here. But they talk about, you know, they use this red stuff because that's what was used on actual maps. But the footprints, the dotted ones, are not easy to see. So I found that to be problematic. Also, the rules about how to put and draft dice felt to be overly complicated because it wasn't that complicated. Now, when it comes to roll and write games, or stroll and write in this game, but whatever, when it comes to these, you need something to set it apart. So, what's the difference in this one than in the myriad of other games out there? There's well over 100 of these games, folks. Uh, this one is based in this historic city, and it has actual landmarks and things on the board. Okay, that's cool, and the book talks about that. So if that's your jive, that might attract you to this. Other than that, there's also dice drafting. Now that's done in other roll and write games, but this one does it in a slightly different way. Here's where I have a few problems with the game. One, the dice being drafted is not an interesting process. You simply take the best one for you. You're not really worried about taking one someone else wants. You don't have time to look at their boards. You're taking the best one for you, and usually the best one for you is pretty obvious. I didn't find it to be that exciting. I also found it to be the rules for drawing half roads and things were unnecessarily complex. I, I, I found it ridiculously like, well, you can do this, but not this. Just let me draw a half road somewhere. Why does it matter? I felt like that was a whole layer. And then also the, rule, the, the um, points on how to connect loops and different things and touching stuff. I felt like there was a few too many rules for a game that should just be simple and draw it out. So that's one problem I had with the game. And the scoring is, you know, there. The other problem I have with the game is it's a fun game, but the second, third time you play, you're like, oh yeah, we're on the same map. You're always on the same map. Yes, you can start from a different spot, but yes, there's always, if you want trees, go down there. And you have to cross at least a few bridges. So you're always going for as many bridges as you can because the more bridges, the more points you score. Not to mention, the more bridges, the more points you score. I found that, by the way, I don't think that's a good design choice to have the number of bridges be the number of ways you can score, but also the number of bridges you cross is a scoring method. So you, you're going to do it. The game is like, hey, do this. And the bonus thing's neat. The fact that you can go on footpath to technology, essentially, that's worth doing if you're down near the footpaths. Maybe you want to go there. And I have a, a good time playing this. And it stands out a little bit, like I said, because of the historical nature, although I believe that historical nature is also a bit binding to how the game comes across. But what else can I say? It's a nice, easy-going, roll-and-write game. I don't think I would pick it over many, many other ones out there. It's solidly in the middle of the pack. And to me, it's a bit forgettable other than the cool theme. But I don't know that that's strong enough to bring it about. That's not strong enough for me to really recommend this because why get this one? Unless maybe you live in this city or you visited the city or something like that. So some neat ideas. I think it could have used a little bit more development, maybe be a bit more streamlined. But, you know, hey, I, I don't think it's a bad time playing it either. It's an interesting little game. That's Seven Bridges. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, a nice roll and write.